Below the site of the Grand Rapids, the river follows the western slope of the St. Lawrence Divide, pushing it south towards the Gulf. Savannah Portage State Park marks the site of the trail used by Native Americans and early European explorers to cross the divide between the Great Lake Basin and the Mississippi. The Big Sandy Lock and Dam at one time allowed boat traffic to navigate between the lake and the Mississippi. The lock is gone, but it's still a good place to camp and fish. Growing in width and volume, the character of the river changes below Big Sandy. It's a very interesting and beautiful stretch of river because there's a great transition. In fact, if you were in one stretch of river and then moved to another, you might not even know you're in the same river. South of Big Sandy, the river winds through the Cuyuna Range, an early iron mining region now abandoned but not forgotten. The Croft Mine Site is now a museum open to the public. This is a shaft that operated from about 1914 to about 1934 and uh, goes down 630 feet. Uh, we also have some historic uh, buildings uh, behind us. Years ago when it was in operation here, it served as a locker room for the miners. They'd come here and change clothes and then they'd go down in, do their mining, and then they'd come up and get cleaned up before they went home. The former mines throughout the Cuyuna Range are now owned by the state and managed by the Department of Natural Resources. It's 5,000 acres of land. These lands were left substantially disturbed by that mining. Uh, deep open pit mines, four or 500 feet deep. Piles of overburden and waste ore were piled up next to them but the power of nature to regenerate itself has really demonstrated itself. Now it's covered with beautiful, young, emerging white pines. And those deep, open pits filled with water once the mine shut down the pumps that had kept them drained. What'd you see? Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was about this long. The water clarity is substantial. 50-foot horizontal clarity, so it's one of the best scuba diving and snorkeling areas in the Midwest. And for those who prefer to stay above the waterline. We're always looking for new places to paddle, so we're really looking forward to exploring this new area. It, it's not so much about the fishing as it is just being out on the water, and the kayak affords me that the solitude to do that. And those huge piles of mine waste around the pits now make excellent hiking, skiing, and biking trails. The International Mountain Bike Association has just worked with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources to create a series of mountain bike trails of multiple levels. Safety first. That is the truth right there. Because if you didn't have a helmet, you'd break your head so that families can bike on some levels and very experienced mountain bikers will find all the challenge they need at other levels. In addition to that, we have the Kind Lakes Trail. This will be a trail connection that will go to Brainerd, connect with the Paul Bunyan. The head of the Paul Bunyan Trail is adjacent to the Northland Arboretum. Started in 1972 on the site of the Brainerd Landfill, the Arboretum contains one of Minnesota's primary examples of jack pine savanna and fun activities throughout the year. Whenever you say Brainerd, people say lakes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, how do they get come to understand that really the, the real treasure, I think, uh, is the Mississippi River. If you talk to international tourists, you know, uh, there's two things that draw them to Minnesota. Mall of America, Mississippi River. Brainerd is surrounded by beautiful lakes, and it has almost 10 miles of Mississippi shoreline. Brainerd's downtown is revitalized. An old school building has been renovated and is now an art center. And it's an easy drive on the Great River Road to get to many attractions. There's an abundance of affordable golf courses around the Brainerd area. Golf has become a leading reason to come to North Central Minnesota. Now it's a state park. But in the mid 19th century, the ox cart trail between St. Paul and the Red River came this way 
and made Crow Wing a boom town. Then the railroad decided to cross the river at Brainerd. Camp Ripley is a 53,000 acre training facility for the National Guard, a military museum, and a wildlife refuge open to the public. Welcome to Camp Ripley, home of the Martin J. Scoven Environmental Classroom. The classroom is comprised of about 200 mounted birds and mammals that are found here in central Minnesota. The classroom is open to the public. We have opportunities where individuals can schedule events and listen to a presentation about the research projects on black bear, white-tailed deer, and even the timber wolf. There is much more to see and do in this area and on the rest of the Great River Road. For more information, check out our website, mnmississippiriver.com.